The North London Derby. The battle for North London's territory. Two clubs, although one is technically Woolwich based. A 4-2 thrashing at the Emirates, followed by a 2-0 win at the same ground. It is time I did a preview. The problem is though, most Arsenal fans are deluded and incredibly annoying. So who can I find that isn't those two? A Guna that is known to be the voice of reason? Where can I find him? It's time to go! Wake up and smell the coffee. Preview to San Chippe coming right away. Say that again. Half of your brief um, way coming in with one of them. That's okay, so welcome to another video and I'm doing something slightly different. I'm here with Claude from Arsenal Fan TV. Claude, how are you doing, mate? Nice to meet you, Sam. And, uh... You're in my territory now, so behave yourself, yeah? But except you're playing in our territory yeah. this weekend. Yeah, big one. I'm just Wembley. polite. <laughs> big one, Wembley. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, definitely going to be interesting. Before I start this off, I've got to say this, yeah. I've been, I've been following Arsenal fan TV since 2014, I think. And I remember like the first time I saw this video was, I think it was Swansea when you lost 2-1. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, this is the bit I want to talk about. You and Ty, it makes me laugh so much. Like normally, when you have like your regular debates, you're supposed to like let people have equal time of amount of speaking. But when it comes to Robbie, it seems like there's you, there's Ty, and then just unleashes you and you shout at Ty. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Oh, I think I'll give him his fair share, don't you? It's fuming. I, I, when they, um, the, towards the end, I didn't even wait to the last minute. I was so disgusted with the performance. And uh, I come out and I just let go. So <laughs> I just absolutely let go. I was so... I'm telling you, you was... you're, you're quite liked, mm. weirdly enough, by a lot of Tottenham fans, mainly in the sense that we enjoy watching yeah, Arsenal lose. I know why you enjoy it, because <laughs> you like taking the piss. But no, but also because no, 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 amongst no, no. the most angriest moments, you do talk a lot of sense, fair, fair play to you. Like, a lot of us say that. So that's why I wanted you here in this preview, because I was mm. looking for a gooner that actually chats a lot of sense. That, day, that particular day was really upsetting, really, really upsetting, and... Um, and I just, I lost it completely and uh, it went quite viral, didn't it? So. <laughs> um, North London Derby coming up on this Saturday. Uh, we were hoping it was going to be in the new stadium, but alas, still at Wembley. Um, how yeah, what's happening with that then? I can't believe it. I mean, I don't, honestly. Mind you, uh, I think it's. Uh, a couple I, of Arsenal workers there uh, doing a few tricks. Oh, I've there, heard some of them are West Ham as well, but. Do you know what it is? Yeah, I'm not even it getting is, my. It is, it is poor though. You can't get your stadium ready for. Um... I'm not even bothering to get my hopes up anymore. I've so your record, about it. At, your record at Wembley is quite good at the moment. It's not that bad, is yeah, it? Yeah, no, it's good. We'll, we'll get on with this. So it's coming up this Saturday. Um, my first question really is, in comparison to let's say this time last year and maybe the year before under Wenger, as an Arsenal fan and now under your new manager Unai Emery. How do you feel as an Arsenal fan? What's your mood? What's your attitude towards going to these games? Do you feel like there is a change or is it still more or less the same with very little improvements? I think it's, uh, there is a little improvement. Um, the only thing I don't like is the, way the, the style of our football at the moment. It's not great to watch. But uh, points-wise, you can't argue with 
we're, we're right up there. Last season we wasn't. We was about eight or nine points off yeah. coming into this period. Uh, I think what, what's happened is that Wenger's left a big, a real mess there. I mean, and the guys come in. I don't think he's the, the elite manager that we we should have got. And he's got a job on his hand. And uh, if he gets top four, I think you've got to give him a lot of credit. But I don't think if he doesn't get top four, I don't think he's going to get any more opportunity. To well, really the the problem is, is that you. You will make some changes, but they're very slow changes. And by the time you've sorted out your defence, your attackers are going to get too old. And then you've got to start your rebuilding from there. And it's almost yeah, like a cycle. That's, that's a problem because uh, Bamian and Lacazette are near 30, aren't they? They're, so, they're in their peak of their career. Yeah, so that is a problem. But the, only, the thing is, I think, we need, I think we do need to get... If we get three top-class defenders in the summer... But the only way we're going to get that is if we qualify in the Champions League because they're not going to be attracted. Do you think that you'll get to top four at all? Or is it really... Uh, if, if it was a yes and no, top four? Well, it's on because it's, we've got a good chance because yeah. at the present moment, um, Chelsea are in a sort of state that we're in. Not, not actually... Good. And Manchester United have got a few injuries. I think the big the big thing is how, how we cope with the Spurs and Man United game. Yeah. If we can get four points out of then, I think the confidence will come up and maybe we will finish the season strongly. I do, but we, it yeah. could go pear shape and lose both, both of them. I do want to say that this preview is being done two games before the North London derby starts. Obviously, you've got Bournemouth, I think. We've got Chelsea. Mm. If we lose against Chelsea, and God forbid if we actually lose against you lot at Wembley, you are one, and you win your two games, you are one point behind us. Then it's down to us to beat you at, well, uh, at Wembley. <laughs> I keep saying one. <laughs> but, um, but for us to be really in touch, we can't lose that game with you because if we lose that game with you that's it we can't catch you anymore 4-2 game the 4-2 defeat which honestly it did kill me inside on the day when I did have to watch that utter performance from us well, it didn't I mean, we didn't kill were... me <laughs> well maybe on that one day it didn't but you look on and on and on which I'll get to but yeah you beat us 4-2 um, we were very lucky I think to be 2-1 up in my opinion um, I I can't remember the detail per se, but it's fair to say you treated this game like it was your cup final. Like you put everything on the table to win that North London derby. And then what happens? You are basically above us for 72 hours or something. And that's like the only time in the league you've been above us pretty much. And since on, we've moved on. You've seemingly were supposed to move on from it, but it looks like the changing room selfies got to the players' heads. And all them and well, what's, what's the name of that French no, or Italian I, David Luiz fellow in your team? The guys, uh, Guendouzi, yeah. Guendouzi, yeah, just like giving it all large in the streets, and then you know your players forget that there's way more games, and we then go on to beat you in the cup, two 0 at the Emirates. And I, I, I gotta say, it's been it's been an interesting season for the North London derby mm. alone, to the way we've played at your ground, where we played at your ground again the second time, and then it all goes down to this, and then. I feel like it does go all down to this because this would be like a very dig- signif- significant moment for both teams where it goes from there in the season. Yeah, um, I think Spurs um, on uh, the, the uh, recent game against Burnley. I yeah, think, I know he scored a goal, but uh, Kane. But I wouldn't have brought him back. I would have eased him back. Yeah, I think he made a mistake there. I think. Things were going all right. They were winning games. They didn't need to push in. And I thought they looked a bit... Um, when you get 10 days off as well, it doesn't help. OK, so on to the next question, really. I mean, I've been following football since... Well, following Tottenham, rather, since I was born. The first thing I was wearing was Tottenham pyjamas. My dad pretty much forced it You're on me. You're a bit me. of a tie then, isn't you? Really, Tottenham pyjamas. <laughs> You're a bit like a tie. I'll try and find a baby photo and put that there to show in the screen, just to show that I'm not 
chatting. Tie wear, yeah. tie wears, pyja- Arsenal pyjamas. Yeah, it's, it's like an Arsenal accessory. He's got Ar- Arsenal toy, isn't it? duvet. He's got everything. He's, he's got, got the lot. headphones, got the earphones, the, the water duvet, bottle. Arsenal pyjamas. Arsenal, uh, uh, Arsenal cut before he goes to bed. And, and everything. <laughs> I actually saw a hilarious meme the other day. Um, have you ever seen Fifty Shades of Grey? No, I don't want. No, no. Yeah, no. yeah. yeah. Well, not for me. Not for me. There's this scene when um, Christian Grey, the very promiscuous main character, is saying to the girl, "Come and let me show you my chamber, where it's pretty much like fetish and all that." Well, they did one of Ty with Ty's face on it, saying, "Let me show you my favourite." room of the house and then you go in there and it's just basically an all decorated arsenal bedroom arsenal oh, blanket right. arsenal pillows arsenal curtains like basically a 10 year old's room but that was the I meme seen that it one. made me laugh that one that seriously made me laugh but yeah um what's your favorite ever north london derby you've been to in your lifetime supporting arsenal league game my favorite all anyone time. it's got to be the semi-final where, where we're at, 19, Trafford, 19, Anfield, no no League Cup semi final, nineteen eighty seven. Yeah, you lot were one 0 up. Fifteen minutes to go, singing about Wembley. Actually, in the previous game, because it was a two legged fair before they done. In in them days, it was two legged, and if it weren't decided, it's a replay. Uh, uh, they tossed up for the uh, neutral, or uh, no, tossed up for who plays at home. We lost the first leg one 0 uh, Clive Allen Clive Allen scored 1-0 we went to Tottenham they went 1-0 up in the second leg at White Hart Lane and with 50 uh, then in the second half we overturned it 2-1 but it, of course in them days there was no away goals it was no away goals and then um, uh, they tossed up the coin for the uh, the game at um, they tossed the, the coin up for uh, who, who gets the venue. It came down that we had to play at White Hart Lane again. We went to White Hart Lane. So third game? Yeah. Wow, I did not like Clive that. Allen scores again, because he kept scoring, scoring all the time. <laughs> Clive Allen scores again, puts them 1-0 up. 15 minutes to go. And um, there's Tottenham fans are singing, we're on the way to Wembley. You know, you know the Aussie song. Oh, Spurs, are, yeah. yeah, Spurs are on their way at Wembley. Uh, we're sitting there, one 0 down, and out of nowhere, the man I've been—I was absolutely cussing all the time. <laughs> Ian Allinson shoots, puts it through Clemens's leg, and he became my hero that night. He became—I sang his name all night after, and then the dear, dear old Rocky, who's, who's now no yeah. longer with us, got the winner. And we 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 nicked it two one, and uh, that was my my favorite my favorite moment. I'd be more fussed about it if I was alive back then, because mm. I just I don't think I even know about this result. Cause my dad tells mm. me my dad would have been there at the game, and he yeah. would have probably been rightfully not telling me anything about it. So that's something new for me to learn. Um, my favorite one of all time has got to be the five one. I was there. Um, I was. 11 years League old, Cup. I think, at the time. Yeah. yeah, League Cup. It was a replay. That's and it was, when Adebayor came on the pitch and... Started, started casting with Bentner, yeah, I yeah, think it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I do remember that bit. We were I'll all, tell you, I was disgusted that night because I, we, we didn't put out a, a proper first team and I thought we should have really gone for it and because uh, it's North London derby, semi-final yeah. and, and he got it completely wrong that night and um, good luck to you. <laughs> you really put you put a show on that night and you beat us yeah well and oh it was one of the best it was hands down the best probably one of my Derby. worst nights and yeah so next question really is is that you know I'm always Mesut Ozil seems to always be that talking point in the media he's had it with the German mm. FA and he's currently having it in Arsenal I just personally think his attitude just isn't right I mean you can't pick your games to where you want to perform your best and then be paid how much are you getting paid a week now let's forget the money let's forget about the money for a minute yeah because at the end of the day the money is covered with his commercial interest yeah with uh, what he brings the shirt sales and everything that's all covered his wages so the money's not an issue the issue is the manager and him don't see eye to eye on how he plays uh, and the system that Emery wants to play that's the biggest issue so uh, it, to me, and 
I'll say this, and uh, people won't agree with me. A lot of Arsenal fans will agree, and a lot of Arsenal fans won't. To me, technically, he's the best player at the club. But does he fit into Emery's style of football? Possibly no. But um, you can't. Oh, how can I say? I think it's a bit harsh to have a guy. As I say, his wages are covered commercially by shirt sales and everything. So forget the money side of it. Yeah, it's more the principle, yeah, really. Yeah. I just think I just feel that maybe he doesn't fit the style of Emery, the, uh, Unai Emery's uh, philosophy. To me, I would like. I think if you get. If you get players around him that work that work harder, and he he can, I think I, I've watched just the last couple of games. I think he's he gives us more uh, fluid flu, uh, fluency in our play when he's playing. But that's my opinion. I, I, I know there's a lot of Arsenal fans that are divided over that. <laughs> it's uh, I to be honest with you, I'm sick and tired of hearing about the debate. But that's. At the end of the day, more, the most important thing is the football club. All right, so this one's going to be quite an interesting one. Power shift in North London. Um, I know Arsenal fans are very adamant that there isn't a power shift. Us Tottenham fans like to say, well, you look at it at who's playing, firstly, more entertaining football and who's all around got a better starting eleven. Um, You've got to say, though, Tottenham are a far different side this, to they were 10 this, years ago. At this present moment, if you're going to go by league-wise, forget about... Uh, you've got to say Spurs are ahead because uh, they've finished the co- uh, on top of Arsenal in the last couple of seasons. And at the moment, they're... Uh, was it seven points clear? Um, but football can change in about a year or two, you know what I mean? So it's getting it over three or four or five years, then you can talk about power shift because... Football can change in about 12 months. Well, I feel quite confident in three or f- three to five years we can <coughs> still carry on with this because as long as you've as long as you've still got your the, chairman, tru- the trouble with your with, with your squad now is that what you're going to have you're going to the wages. It's, I know. No, it's the, it's the wage structure. It's the move to White Hart Lane. It's going to cost you a lot of money. It's going to and if you don't win a trophy, it's going to be very hard to keep the players that you've got at this moment. Now you're going to have people like you're going to have people queuing up to get Ericsson the, and Kane and and um, uh, Alderweire. Oh, I don't even know. Uh, Toby Alderweireld, yeah. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's now on a contract. If he a release clause, yeah, the release, release clause, yeah. And these players are, gonna, are not going to might not be there. I think Kane will stay for us on the long term. The biggest Ericsson prob- and the pro- I'm biggest about. problem is keeping your manager because. Well, because as, ma- as well as uh, Solskjaer is doing at Manchester United at the moment, as well as he's doing at the moment, it could be at the end of the season, if the few results don't go their way, that they'll be pursuing. And when Man United come calling... Do you honestly think he'll go to Man United, Pochettino? Well, if Man United start calling, mate, you start, you start uh, worrying. Because uh, the biggest club in the country, and he's not going to turn it down. And he's not going to turn it down because... It, when he if he goes there, he knows he's guaranteed money. He's not getting he's not getting any guarantees from Daniel Levy at Spurs. Well, he just actually had a wage increase from Daniel Levy. I think in I think it was I like November or December time he had a wage increase. What a high wage increase as well. The only thing in your favour at the moment, Oli Solskjaer's doing a good job at United, yeah. and you probably might get an ex- uh, extension. But then towards the end of the season, if Oli go, uh, Oli doesn't get into the top four. Man United might start thinking again and they might be knocking on Tottenham's door well look I think Pochettino has demonstrated on the pitch how happy he is at Tottenham that's why we sing he's Tottenham you know the only thing I will say is that you shouldn't be dismissing trophies like you are um, no I'm completely the way he treated the FA Cup was no it was horrendous last season this season I thought we were a bit unlucky with the Carabao Cup no, but I'm talking about the FA Cup as well. Yeah, losing to Palace was very difficult for us because, you know, we, we were without key players. Ali just got injured, no Kane. And we, Pochettino got a bit too ambitious thinking he could start Oliver Skip and Carl Walker-Peters. And mm. 
Palace took the initiative and started a far stronger team, which, let's face it, were a better starting eleven than our starting eleven, and it's a huge step between starting eleven and bench exactly. at a club like so Tottenham. What I'm, uh, what I'm trying to say, you've got to reassess well, this next next season. Well, I feel like with the stadium, the stadium will bring a nice vibe into thinking that we're now that we're back in a stability I'll give you one can... warning about your stadium as well I mean you're going to move into I remember when Arsenal moved into the Emirates yeah right it took them a while to get you it took them a while to get used to it it's a different it's a different ball game well, and they, it took them a while to get going well to, be, to begin with you moved from Islington to I don't wait I don't even, even know the postcode of the Emirates, but you moved into no, different... No, 200 yards away. Right, you moved 200 yards away. We're still playing in the same turf. Yeah, but it's, That's the, same, the, it's the same thing, but what I'm saying is not the same. It's, it's a different type of atmosphere. You're going to have corporate and all this. Yeah. Different, completely different atmosphere. I do like the way you put the one tier. I wish Arsenal had done that. But whether you're going to have the same atmosphere that you had at the uh, White Hart Lane is another thing, but... We shall see, because and you're going to attract different type of fans. Because you're, yeah, that you know is what a, I'm trying that, to that, yeah, that, that that's a concern for the fan base alone. Yeah, but I feel I do honestly think that when we move into that new stadium, there will be a new sense of stability, and maybe it might even be easier to win a cup because at least we're not. So power shift. I, you don't about power shift, but the trouble is, are you happy though? That, all these years you've been playing really good football but you're not winning any tr- no, no trophies yeah, at the end of it's, it um, listen you've got to look at this into context you look at this like 10 years ago when we last won a trophy mm. and you look at it now we won a trophy but we finished 12th and we were always finishing below you we could never quite get it to top 4 See, it's a long step but then we get to top 4 we're quite frankly a bet- I've never seen him in my life a better side than I remember us. when we were going through the trophy drought yeah. I had Spurs fans going on oh look they're, they're top. I'm not interested in trophies uh, I mean they're not getting any trophies but uh, all they're interested in top four yeah I had Spurs fans in. Yeah. and now Spurs fans are doing exactly the same thing <laughs> do you know what I'm saying if it's you think about it though you actually get a lot more revenue and money when you finish in the yeah, top I know, four but than the I, FA Cup. I remember Spurs fans going on about look Arsenal haven't won this tro- haven't won football a trophy football changes like you said football haven't won a trophy for 10 odd years you know what I'm saying but anyway yeah. that's what I'm saying he does here and the, the fans change as well <laughs> the fans uh, do change and um, we should just see uh, power shift I know you're going to say at this present moment. Shift. At this present moment, Spurs are Spurs are ahead of Arsenal. But in 12 months, who knows what can happen? Okay. So you're basically saying in this power shift, Tottenham have got the upper hand. Yeah. Well, there you are. Claude has said it. Upper hand. Oh, so no, now I'm in trouble. Now you're in trouble. You're going to have to slightly step out of your comfort zone because we are it's doing combined a combi- 11. Yeah, right, combined start and eleven. Let's go, let's go. So shall we do this with a um, four-four-two formation? Or four three three. Four three three. Let's go. Alright, let's go four three three. In goal, who are you having? I've been impressed with Lloris apart from Burnley, because he's really helped us a lot in Dortmund. Leno I don't I think I have seen some good moments from him, I'll give you that, but I still feel Lloris as a keeper is better than Leno. Mm. Yeah, I'll just I'll slightly give you that one. Okay. Lloris it is then. Um, right, full backs. The fullbacks, I'm not particularly that impressed with with Tottenham. Um, Trippier and Aurea just have these constant problems that always drives us mad as Spurs fans. They don't track back properly. Trippier, yes, he's good at crossing, but he is incredibly slow when he has to track back for the counter attack, mm. which often exposes him a lot as a wing back. Um, See, this is a, I've got a problem with this because are we going on a, on what? Based on current performance and current players playing uh, right because now, because it's a shame because I. Well, I don't know, we could if, put... If yeah. Hector Bellerin yeah. is fit for me, he, I'd give him the right back spot. You know what, we'll do it regardless to injury, so we'll right, put I'll Hector. give Hector Bellerin, when he's fit, I think he's the right back. Okay. Um, centre-backs. I think Tottenham... Your, your centre-backs are a joke, if I say so Well, you myself. say that, I think Socrates is all okay, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, he's okay, but I still wouldn't put him in the same class as... Um, Batongan and Alderweireld. Oh, right, I'll give you the two centre backs. The two centre backs. We've got left back here now. Danny Rose. And we've got 
Yeah, fine. Doing well, so oh, don't give me Monreal. <laughs> have you have you accepted Danny? You accepted Danny Rose then? Oh, go on, no, no, all right then. Danny Rose, it is then. Oh, I'm doing no. so well. Um, right for the midfield now. Um, I've got to say, Kalasanac, oh, don't give me that. Uh, let's look at the midfield. Um, I've actually got to say, I am quite impressed with Lucas Torreira, if that's his name. Yeah, go ahead, Lucas. Yeah. I put him in, and then I don't. I know you might want Shaka in the team, but I personally don't. Mm, no, I agree with you. Um, I mean, I could be putting Deli Ali there. I've got, but you can't have Mezzo's all there. You've got to have Mezzo's. Ah, uh, no, because I rate Ericsson more than Özil. I have to say, and you um, have to look. At, I rate Ericsson more than Özil. I think you can play both. Actually. We'll get to the attackers part in a second. Um, the front three. So, with the midfield overall, have you agreed with Sissoko, Winks and Torreira? It's so reluctant, I can see it in your face. Yeah, go on, but now I'm going to have Ozil in the team. I've got to have Ozil up. Uh... Winks has only broken through this season. No, he's, he, he had an all right season last season. Fun Green's will be lacking at that many games. So you've got to put Ericsson in the field. Alright, I'll take out Sissoko and put on Ericsson, I think. No, I'm going to take out Winks and put on Ericsson. All right, so the midfield is Ericsson, Torreira, and um, Ericsson, Torreira, and Sissoko, yeah. So... I'm not going to go Ozil. So for the front three now, we're chatting, yeah? Ozil, Lacazette, and Kane. No, I'd put Kane... Well, what about Son? Son needs to be there. I'll let you have Kane over a Bam, yeah. Well, I've got to have Lacazette in there. No, no I, I disagree. I think Son is a powerful winger. You see, now this is... I thought you were easy going, but this is the most... This is the trickiest part. No, I'm not giving up on this one. No, no, no. <laughs> George, you prefer uh, Lacazette to Aubameyang? To be honest with you, no, what I don't know, you can't... I'm giving, a, I'm giving up Aubameyang because I've got Kane, but I'd love Lacazette alongside Kane. Okay, how about Lacazette, Kane and Son? You know who you want? Lucky yes! Lack is it, Kane and Son. So there's our combined starting 11. I'm not a big Shaka fan, really. Shaka will Last question, really, of this preview is um, score predictions. Um, and who's going to be in the score sheet as well? I'm going to go 1-1. Yeah. I'm going to go 1-1 one, one, and I'm going to go one, one. Lacazette for us. So you think you can actually get a draw out of this? Yes, I do. I, do. I, I really do. I think it's, it's North London derby. Form goes out the window, as you know. Last year we came there. We were completely outplayed and yet we still need to grab the draw at the end. Like I said, uh, you were very close to getting a yeah. draw at the end, yeah. I so that. you can never, it's never, it's never, whatever, whatever you say, whatever the difference between the sides, it's never clear cut. I think we've got a chance, I think we can get a draw there. Yeah. Right. Up. Well, if you know our results lately, we don't draw games, we either win or lose. Well, that's this enough, could be the first that's draw. That's enough thing, you'd do a draw as well, wouldn't you? I wouldn't. You are due a draw. Yeah, we are due one, but I wouldn't want There's it to no be There's no way you're Arsenal. going all season without a draw. There's, that can't, that's impossible. But <laughs> if, if we do do that, that would be the weirdest yeah. ever statistic, mm. I would have to say. Um, it's got to happen. I think be I'm, I'm going for a 2 1. Depending on what goes on in Chelsea, if we just beat Chelsea, mm. I reckon we can. But that's the thing. Last time we played you, we beat Chelsea comfortably and then we lost to you. But I honestly think we can win these two games. So I am thinking of a 2-1, 2-1 win. Um, Aubameyang to score first and then Son and Kane to score two. I think I could see us conceding first, but for some reason I can just see this as another classic 2-1 Tottenham win when we're 1-0 down yeah, yeah. and we win two. This is what I mean. It's going to be a very interesting game. I think it'll be a great game. And, well, I don't, I'm not going to wish you that, but... <laughs> 
Thanks for having me on. Cheers for agreeing to come no, on to no, my no, channel. No. And, um, honestly, it was really good uh, getting hold of you and getting to my channel. Yeah. Claude, you are honestly down to earth, guys. So I much. do appreciate it that you've taken the time off to do a preview with me in my channel. So I'll put his social media links in the description below and be sure to check him out. Not, not that he needs it anyway. Um, yeah. No, well. No. I'm only a fan. I'm only a normal fan. That's what I like. I like that attitude. I like that mentality. So thanks for watching and um, thanks for watching and comment below what you thought about this, whether Claude is right with his predicted. Well, I am the voice of reason. Mate. Voice of reason. What you think the result or score is going to be and vote in the poll as well. Is Meza Urzil a flop? No, we ain't going to start all that off. <laughs> I'm joking. Don't push it. I ain't, don't push it. Yeah, I ain't coming <laughs> at this. Right. Cheers.